wondered about how you felt, Gordy. I mean, you're an old Broncos player yeah. and you're now aligned with the Titans, but the Broncos are in all sorts. Oh, yeah, they are. But don't forget they got the wooden spoon last year. Um, no Jack Bird, no Darius Boyd, no Fafida out of that squad. Um, I'll one tell you retirement, something, Gordy. two moved on, and no Payne Hass and Katoni Stakes, which is arguably their best forward yep. in in Payne Hass and their most consistent forward. And Katoni Stakes, I think, is arguably the best or the most explosive centre in the game. Yep. I, uh, I, if I was Kevy this week, I'd be dropping Anthony Milford. Yeah. Uh, purely on that feeble attempt to tackle for feeder. That was a bloke who just didn't want to tackle him. That was like I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna I'm gonna make it look like mm. I'm trying to tackle him, but I don't even I don't want to put my body in front yeah. of him. I'm gonna come in from the side and I'm not gonna put a shoulder into the tackle. I'm gonna stick an arm out and swing off him. And I just thought that is just not first grade sound. I, I forget what Anthony Milford can do with the ball. If you can't defend, you can't play NRL. Yeah. And that was not a first grade standard attempt to, to- tackle. To talk about the positives, I think it's probably only been about a 13-minute window that's let Brisbane down in the first two games. It was about three three to five minutes against Parramatta when they went to those back-to-back tries. And then, you know, the Titans scored three tries and three sets of six. That's unheard of. That just shows me a side that when you make a mistake, for one, you carry your divot and you keep on thinking about the mistake and you drop your head and you lose your confidence. And Lose that's concentration where, was the big issue there. Yeah. Totally and then that's where they're at. But, you know, look, mate, they won the second half 12-6, and that's what people are talking about. But that's when all the air's oh, gone out of the on. game. Come on. No, mate, but that's when the oxygen's gone out of the they've game. They've won two hours of out of the four they've played, but they've lost both games. So it's, a, right. it's irrelevant sticking to, yeah. oh, we, we won that half of footy. What's, you, don't, you don't claim to win a half of footy 12-6 when you lose the game. Hmm. Gordy, I remember you made an analogy. I can't remember if it was last year or the year before about the Broncos are like a Formula One Ferrari, but... They didn't have the right driver. And at the time you were speaking about their halves, I think it's important that we point out the mess and what's going on at the Brisbane Broncos at the moment has got bugger all to do with Kevin Walters. He's the one who's been left, right? Clean up the mess. To clean up the absolute bun fight, right? The Formula One Ferrari's hit the wall. It's gone into a million different pieces. And the, the, the concerning element is it's probably going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. If you look at their roster at the moment and some of the decisions that have been made, you can trace it back to when Ben Hunt left and they went and made the decision to sign Jack Bird on a four-year deal that that never justified um, the investment in terms of the decision they'd decided to make. But the fact that David Fafita is now playing for the Gold Coast Titans, the fact that that other young gun, Reese Walsh, signed with the Warriors... This week, we touched on Brendan Piacora minutes ago. He's in all likelihood will end up at Canterbury Bankstown. Katoni Staggs, they're under siege to mm. remain maintain his signature with the club as well. None of this is Kevy's doing. So I actually, no. I've got a lot of empathy for Kev. And if nothing changes, do you know what? I've seen the attitude change. I know, you know, around the group, like going there, it's buzzing. The guys are prepared to work hard. There's a lot of work to be done, like I touched on at the beginning of the show. Kevy's coaching these guys, teaching them how to play. Then there's the real changes, then week to week. And when I say that these players are week to week players, I mean that they're not sure whether they're going to be there next week. It's different at the Roosters when you get those hardened guys and, you know, you keep on working on their form and all that kind of stuff. It's a it's a huge job. I just hope, and we've got to watch this space because I reckon it's going to implode, but the people above Kevy need to support him. I don't think that they... That, I said it last year. The recruitment officer is the one that signed them all. Um, the chairman, the CEO, they really need to get behind him and give him the tools that he needs to shine. And just to one point, the boys are down, right? And, yes, we all had a chip at the side last year. We were supposed to have a race day yesterday, all the old boys, Broncos, to go with the young guys, get around them, talk to them. And they are young and try to help them, you know, get a little bit wiser and an older head on a young man's body. And it got cancelled by the people above Kevy. Mm. I'm just interested to hear. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, what do you mean it got cancelled? So the Broncos had an old boys' day yesterday, organised, right? And to get all those blokes back in there and you know buzzing around, and whether there's a Shane Webke and Petro Sivnis, even all those guys going to a race day, and you sit there and you have a chat to those guys, and from twelve till five, you can talk to the young group, and then they're buzzing around, which I loved. Like when I saw the old guys, whether a Gene Miles or a Wally Lewis. 
I would have loved to have gone and had a beer with him and just bumped shoulders and talked footy. And it got canned above you Based know, on the what plank. Was it a rain I reason no or was idea. it... Uh, well, uh, it just could, said that it come... Could have been the weather? It wasn't raining in Brizzy. It was no. all right up at Eagle Farm. No, 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 it was a track. great... Listen, um, it was a great day yesterday. And it was a little bit damp, but it doesn't matter. It's, it's always good weather inside a pub, Kenty. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hurt. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 mate, the point is, I think it come from <laughs> the management, right. which... Which shows that if Kevy wants to take full control of this team, they've got to give him full control of the team. But yeah. you made a comment earlier there, Gordy, about so you said something is about to implode. Well, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, <laughs> they need to give him full reins and they need to support him. If he's the coach there, he can't be getting blocked with the things that he wants to do. If he's got to set the culture, if he's trying to set the standards there, it's got to be Kevy's club. But surely this would have been discussed or argued before he took the job. Well, sometimes oh, it's not. I, I, I don't, don't think, think they so. wanted him to get the job. I think it was just the pressure from everybody else. Mm. Yes. Yeah, That's the, what the, I the think. Fear, the fear and I reckon the... that there's a bit of sour grapes there. And I reckon that, you know, that the hands was, was forced a little bit. And I just, and I feel a little bit for Kevy at the moment. And... Um, I haven't reached out to him after the game, but, you know, I just hope that Kevy actually gets the chance. And we all know what's happening, but, you know, we just got to sit back and, you know, hope that he gets his way and he can get the team that he wants to get the Broncos back to the club that they should be.